the new number one team in 1AA, the Furman Paladins, come to Statesboro to battle old rival Georgia Southern next on FSN South. Oh, oh. Saturday in November brings us to Statesboro, Georgia, and the campus of Georgia Southern University for what should be a smash mouth day of football in the Southern Conference. Number one, Furman, number 14, Georgia Southern, and we've got it live for you on FSN South here at Paulson Stadium. Good afternoon, everybody. Bob Rathman, Curtis Bayham, welcoming you to college football on FSN South this afternoon. And what a great matchup we have for you here today. Number one, Furman, the cardiac kids of college football. They are number one in the country, and they've won four of their games, either on their last possession or in multiple overtimes. And their quarterback, Engel Martin, can do it all. Engel Martin, big time quarterback, 1,661 yards passing, 14 touchdowns thus far this year, 80 yard touchdown run, averaging 42.7 yards per punt. The kid's the punter as well. If he's able to get the ball downfield and put pressure on Georgia Southern's defense, he can open up the running game for Furman and control this game with ball control. Engel Martin's numbers very impressive since transferring from the University of Florida. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern is playing for its playoff life here this afternoon. Already the Eagles have lost three games this season. They're in a must-win situation. And Jason Foster, their sophomore quarterback, is coming off a tremendous game last week against South Dakota State. Foster, very athletic quarterback, 1,091 yards rushing, 16 touchdowns, 556 yards passing. If he's able to run that triple for option properly today, get to the outside and put pressure on Furman's outside linebackers and corners. It can open up the dive play, and Bob, you and I both know the dive is what the triple option is all about. They love to run it in Statesboro, and a capacity crowd at Paulson Stadium to watch it unfold as Furman meets Georgia Southern next on FSN South. Today's game is being brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers driving the Carolinas, BB&T Branch Banking and Trust, and by Food Lion, extra low prices. Back at Georgia Southern, the Eagles ready to entertain Furman. Couldn't ask for a better day weather-wise. Temperatures in the mid-70s with overcast skies. We are in for a great day of college football in the Southern Conference. We talked about the quarterbacks, but two great linebackers will be featured here today. And for more on that story, we send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Corey Kessler. Thanks, Bob. I specifically asked for him and head coach Bobby Lamb what a football fan could expect from today's game this afternoon, who was going to win and how. He said the team that limits the other team's offense from staying on the field longer will win this game. And, of course, that means defense. And two linebackers that you're going to be calling their name all day long. John Mooring for Georgia Southern will try and limit Furman's offense. He's a linebacker, a junior linebacker, transferred from the Air Force Prep Academy, and he is a guy to look for. He was a Southern Conference player last year on the all-conference team, second team member and has got great bloodlines. His, his father played, was a two-time All-American at CW Post. He's averaging nine tackles a game and also his cousin plays as well in the NFL. How about conversely on the other side? A guy by the name of William Freeman. You'll be calling his name all day long. He's caught the eyes of NFL scouts. He was a defensive player of the year in this conference last year. He will most likely be playing in the NFL on Sundays. He as well is averaging nine tackles a game and it's going to be heavily dependent upon him guys because the Georgia Southern Eagles are averaging 377 yards a game on the ground how about that we'll see what happens and we'll send it back up to you guys it's going to be a heck of a game 
It will be Corey. Thank you very much. We can't wait. We've been waiting in anticipation of this game for a long time. We've had this one circled on the schedule card. You look at the series history. It's tough to beat these Eagles down here in Statesboro. Furman has won only once down here and all time Georgia Southern has won 89 percent of its home games. Playoff type atmosphere here today. Georgia Southern knows this is a must win situation for them. If they lose this game the playoffs may not be there. Bobby Lamb is the head coach at Furman. He used to quarterback this outfit. Now the head man. He's got his ball club at seven and one and just a half a game behind Appalachian in the Southern Conference standings. And for Georgia Southern, the head coach Mike Seawalk, his team with three defeats, and he made it very plain during the week in preparation for the game. It is a must win situation. Mike does not believe that if Georgia Southern loses today, they will get a playoff invitation with four overall defeats. Scott Beckler is the kickoff man for Furman. Georgia Southern won the toss and they elected to receive. A lot of times you'll see the team defer, but not Georgia Southern today. They want the football right away. Lewis Barr is the deep man for Georgia Southern. He's back there with the talented Teddy Kraft. We're ready for football. And an end over end, a short kick will be taken at the 20 yard line. And Georgia Southern gets just a few yards on the return out to about the 30 yard line a 10 yard return and that's where the Eagles will set up shop this afternoon. The quarterback is Jason Foster 5'9", 194 pounds sophomore last week a career day running and passing against South Dakota State. I take a look at his numbers as we check our Carolina Ford dealers starting lineups Foster with over a thousand rushing yards. He is indeed a threat to run it along with Jermaine Austin and Austin gets the initial carry to start this day and there to make the tackle is Andrew Jones a true sophomore at middle linebacker Andrew Jones really coming on strong the Furman coaches were telling us this week. Bob, it's imperative that Georgia Southern starts this game with some type of drive. They need to build up momentum with this triple option and set the stage for what they want to do on offense right away. Austin is the lone setback, a pair of wings, and quarterback Foster under center. Foster wants to pass. And this one is incomplete. Intended for Chris Dickerson number 20 Shelton Riley broke it up. But it's good to see Jason Foster going back to pass. If he's able to mix the run with the pass today their offense will be much more effective and they can create situations that Furman is really not used to when trying to cover that triple option. A third down and seven for Georgia Southern right away a big play for the Furman defense. Foster changing the play puts a man in motion the give is to Austin and he's tripped up and Freeman was the man who applied the hit a terrific linebacker we talked about him with Corey in the open William Freeman the heart and soul of the Furman defense makes the big play to deny the Eagles on third down and Freeman fills the gap right away and you can tell he is fired up today. He knows the importance of this game and William Freeman will be all over the field sideline to sideline most of this afternoon. Dan Jordan is the punter and Justin Stepp the deep man for Furman. So the first big play defensively goes to Furman this afternoon. Step at the 20. To the 27 yard line. Furman football first and 10. A 43 yard punt and a seven yard return. The quarterback for the Furman Paladins is the heralded Engel Martin. Since taking over as the starting quarterback last season, Martin has a record of 17 and 4 as the starting quarterback. Our Carolina Ford dealers starting lineups Engel Martin, 57% passer, over 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns via the airways to lead the Southern Conference. But he's also got a great running back behind him in Felton. He's the man scooting in motion in the play action. 
Martin wants to throw and does. He finds step and a big hit applied by Lewis Barr. Up to the 39-yard line, a first down for Furman on a 13-yard gain. And right away, Bob, you see Martin sprints out and look. Check this play out. Martin sprints out right now, fakes to the fullback, and look at that curl route. Right there, he's trying to set the tone for Furman right now to let the Georgia Southern defense know we're going to pass the ball. It's going to be up to you to make sure you can stop us. Jerome Felton out of the eye, the fullback. This is going to be Carter with the carry. Nothing doing. He was wrapped up by John Mooring. The other great linebacker that we've talked about in this game today, John Mooring is a junior. Number 47 stands 6'1, 212 pounds. And the junior from Naples, Florida, leads the league in tackles with 83. And Mooring, you know, just a great inside linebacker. Look, he fills that gap. And he wants Furman to know, I'm going to be here, I'm going to read my keys, and I'm going to make plays on you all day. Mooring is a great linebacker. I expect him to make plays all day today. So Rob Taylor also getting in on that last tackle. Martin flushed out of the pocket. And dumps it complete to Felton. And near midfield, Jerome Felton makes the grab. It's a 12-yard gain. Earwood was there for the hit, but too late. Now I think they're saying that it is going to be an incomplete pass. I tell you what, Bob. Take a look at the end of this play. Yeah. He looks he like. He never really had. No. He never held on to that ball. But look at the amount of time Martin created with his feet. And the coaches were saying how impressed they was with the way he was able to elude tackles with his running now. Let's see if he can keep that up the rest of the game. Third and 12. Pressure. Martin hit as he throws and incomplete intended for Justin Stepp. Well, that time the Eagles applied the pressure. Nice rush upfield. The defensive line, if they can control the line of scrimmage for Georgia Southern and not let Furman go up and down the field with their passing game, put some pressure on Martin. It can only bowl well for what Georgia Southern wants to do on defense today. Engel Martin, a terrific punter, number two of the Southern Conference, 43 yards per punt. And he drills one. Teddy Kraft will take it at the 21, breaks a tackle, and gets it out to the 27. 11 minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Furman and Georgia Southern, nothing, nothing at Statesboro on FSN Sound. College football fans, North Carolina five-star offensive line recruit Carl Johnson will be in studio to talk about his decision to leave Tobacco Road for the Sunshine State on Countdown to Signing Day, starring Corey Kessler. That's Wednesdays at 6.30 Eastern right here on FSN Sound. Corey working the sidelines. Curtis Bayham up here in the booth with me. Bob Rathman, 11.58 remaining in the opening quarter. And just what we thought, you know, two teams that are ready for a day of hard-hitting football. Second possession for Georgia Southern. This is Austin and nothing there. No gain at all as the front two, the defensive tackle and the nose guard, Fambro 53 and Bray 94, come together to make that tackle. And just look at the push upfield right now from Fambro and Wesley Bray. If they can penetrate upfield and live in Georgia Southern's backfield today, the triple option is definitely not going to work. Georgia Southern's offensive line is going to have to try to control the line of scrimmage in order to make their rushing game work today. Now a whistle as Foster was changing the play. Georgia Southern. They're first. Georgia Southern's going to take a timeout. So Mike Seawalk trying to get on the same page with his quarterback here. The coach took a look at that defense. His quarterback did too, and I don't think that Mike really wanted to run the play that, that Jason was about to call. And These teams meet in early November just about each season as the calendar falls and last year 
These trucks met at Paladin Stadium up in Greenville. November the 6th was the date. Coming into the game, Georgia Southern was ranked number two and then won eight in a row. Furman was ranked number three. Trailing 22-21 late in the fourth quarter. Jerome Felton with an eight-yard touchdown drive. Isaac West scoring on the two-point conversion. And it was Furman winning it 29 to 22. Four lead changes in that game. And we really expect another close battle back and forth this afternoon. I fully expect both of these teams to keep playing with playoff type intensity. And that's why you got the timeout early in this game. There's very little room for error in a game of this magnitude. Basically, Georgia Southern knows they can ill afford to make any mistakes against the number one team in Division I AA. Georgia Southern has the number one rushing offense in one double-A football. 376 yards per game. Foster takes it himself. And, and decent seam gets him out to the 33. And that is exactly what Jason Foster has to do today. He has to put pressure on the outside linebackers and corners of Furman and let them know, you know, if you cannot stop me on the outside with my 4.38 speed, I'm going to turn the corner and I'm looking to break the big one at any moment. But that's going to also open up the middle of the field for that dive play. Jermaine Austin, a great dive type of running back, 1,139 yards himself thus far this year. If he is able to get that dive and pick up 6.6 .6 yards of carry, which is what he is averaging right now, I think Georgia Southern can control this football game with their rushing attack. The man who made the tackle, Maurice Duncan, is okay. He jogs off the field. There you see him, number two, the senior from Macon, South Carolina. And coming in, Christian Owusoyan, number 24, fills that cornerback spot. Georgia Southern with it, third down and just about a yard. Foster again. And he's got the first down. Thacker, the tackle. Eight yeah. yard pickup. So Jason Foster calling his own number, his second rushing attempt of the game. And look at Foster here. He is setting up that triple option right now. And look at him. He's running, turning the corner, which is what we talked about. Look at that athleticism. He attacked the defender at 164 pounds. This kid knows today he has to lay it on the line. Let's see if he continues to try to get to the outside with that triple option today. Foster has 16 of Georgia Southern's 25 rushing yards to date. Meanwhile, the movable tank, Jermaine Austin, carried it straight ahead. The senior from Darien, Georgia, tackled by Fambro and Artis. It will be second down and about seven for Georgia Southern. And you can always count on Jermaine Austin to move the pile forward. He is a tough in-between-the-tackle type of running back. He loves to punish the defenders if they continue to give him the ball. Look for that 6.6 .6 yards of carry. Over midfield to the Furman 47 before Andrew Jones made the tackle. And Jermaine Austin, he is a ball control type of fullback right now. Let's look at the replay. Look at it. He hits it up in there, and he loves to run between the tackles. Ball control type of fullback. He'll get the ball 20, 25 times today. Foster to the 37. Duncan back in the game, made the tackle. And Foster. You know, he's really not showing the option so much in terms of maybe faking a pitch. He's just tucking it under his arm and running. Right. And that was a quarterback uh, draw basically outside all the way. It was nothing that he was doing. It was a real subtle fake. He wanted to try to get to the outside and turn the corner because apparently they feel that the outside is where their bread and butter will be today. 28 yards on three carries for Foster. He will cross it this time to Maynard. To the 34, Jones the tackle. Three-yard gain. 
And again, Bob, they are consistently putting pressure on the outside linebackers and corners of Furman. Everything thus far, big play style, has been going to the outside. Look for, look for Jermaine Austin now to take advantage of this and move the ball up the middle because when you run into the outside, something has to give in the middle. Foster breaks one tackle. And a pickup of five before Ravenel makes the hit. We saw Marquise Maynard come limping out of the game. Foster limping just a bit as he comes back to the huddle. So these uh, Eagles paying a price for all this running. He's limping a little bit, but, uh, you know, he's actually coming out the game and smile is coming in. They can ill afford to lose Jason Foster for any long period of time in this game. He has the offense moving. Right now they're moving the sticks. They need Jason Foster back in this game as soon as possible. And a big hit for Furman. Gary Nelson, the strong side linebacker. Coming through to take Darius Smiley down, the junior quarterback replacement. Looks like Foster's going to go right back in, but what a big play by Nelson. Here's and a look it, at what happened to Jason Foster two plays ago. Yeah, and it and it looks like Bob he got rolled up on his knee right there. Got rolled up on just an awkward tackle. Uh, he got tackled from behind, and the other uh, defender hit him up front. Kind of twisted his knee a little bit, but the warrior that he is, he's back in the game trying to make something happen for his team. Jones chasing from behind. Craft on the far side. It's out of bounds. He caught the pass, but was out of bounds. Incomplete. Now they're saying that. Let's take a look at. Uh, there's a penalty flag down at the 29 yard line. Let's check the end of this play. Whether Kraft ever had possession. No, that ball popped loose, so it was not going to be a catch either way, inbounds or. There's no foul on the play. No foul on the play. First down. They pick up that flag and fourth down for Georgia Southern. But again, it is a pleasant surprise to see Georgia Southern sprinting out and trying to pass the ball somewhat against this firm of defense downfield. If they can mix the triple option runs with some type of passing attack, it'll put tremendous pressure on Furman's defense because they they came in, into this game trying to defend one thing, the triple option. Georgia Southern losing the football on downs. Furman takes over first and ten. Felton. Oh, look at him move that pile to the 45. And Coach Lamb spoke highly of Jerome Felton. He said this is the guy that also has to get our offense going. If he's able to hit those scenes in the middle of the field, very big physical fullback, um, 252 pounds, got 539 yards rushing and nine TDs thus far this year. If he's able to hit it up in there straight up the gut, it's going to open up the passing game for Ingram Martin. Felton. Again, breaking tackles. Mooring wrapped him up. Felton, hard to bring down. Six feet tall, but 250 pounds. And Sophomore from Madisonville, Tennessee. And I can tell you, Bob, that's a load to tackle down every down. I mean, he is breaking tackles left and right right now. He's a very physical fullback. Very physical fullback. And if he continues to punish Georgia Southern's linebackers and interior people, sooner or later, he'll, he'll, he'll get an, op an opportunity to break one before the day is over. Felton barrels his way to midfield. At the 49, a penalty flag. Flag thrown at the Georgia Southern 48. Willingham and Sherman on the tackles for the Georgia Southern Eagles. So the Paladins will be penalized here. Bobby Lamb on that Furman bench. 
No score 536 first quarter. And here is our referee this afternoon Ed Rhodes. Illegal shift offense two men moving in the backfield five yard penalty repeat second down. Second and ten. Martin and Gibson are the setbacks. Step comes in motion. Gibson gets the penalty yardage back to the 49 as we send it down to Corey Kessler. Yeah, that's right, Bob. Talking about Jerome Felton seems to be shredding the defense right now. Interesting about Jerome, in the seventh grade, he took a college entrance exam, the ACT, scored well enough on it to actually earn 19 credit hours between the seventh grade and the 11th grade. He earned 19 credit hours for college. And oh, by the way, he won the game last year on an eight yard uh, run over this team, Georgia Southern. He's going to get a breather on this particular play as Ryan Joyce, the backup, comes in. With Gibson behind quarterback Engel Martin on third down. Martin on the option. Will toss it. Here's Gibson. And Furman is going to be. Let's check where they spot him down right at the 45 yard line. John Mooring credited with the tackle, and the referee Rhodes wants to bring the chains and check it. And it looks very close, Bob. It looks like he may have stretched enough to pick up this first down. He was one tackle away from taking this to the house, though. Had Morin not made that tackle, it was nothing but daylight in front of him just now. First down. <laughs> nice play. Um, quarterback option. Look, he pitches it up, and look at that hole. One tackle, shoestring tackle, nothing but real estate out front. If Maury would not have made that tackle just now, it could have been a touchdown. But you expect Maury to make those type of plays. He's a very solid linebacker. First and ten, Furman on the handoff. Here's Derek Carter. Willingham the tackle. And it looks like. Furman is very much mixing the pass with the run. They're doing a lot of sprint out things with Martin right now. And I can tell you what, they kind of got Georgia Southern defense off balance right now. They don't know if they're going to pass or run. That bodes well for what Furman's trying to do today. Furman is very balanced with 254 rushing yards, 226 passing yards per game on average. Oh. Big hit as Felton got the football, coughed it up. Georgia Southern indicating that they have it. Well, let's see what the referees think. It's going to be third down. Furman maintains possession. Boy, Felton got that handoff. And big number 91 was there to hit him, Sherrod Taylor. And it looks like he never really got the handoff from Martin. The minute Martin extended his hand, the defender was there. Felton really never had a chance with that play. Luckily, they got the ball back. Paulson Stadium, Statesboro, Georgia. Number one, Furman. Number 14, Georgia Southern on FSN South. College football out of the Southern Conference. And here's Engel Martin. With a completed pass to Sprague on the near side. Patrick Sprague, the sophomore from Birmingham, makes that grab a 12 yard pickup. And Martin looks so comfortable in the pocket right now. Let's look at him. He's back in the pocket, sees what he needs to see. Strong, strong arm, guns it for the out route. Sprague makes a very good catch, move the sticks. That's the type of ball control Martin can, can do with his arm and also with his feet. First and 10 at the 33, two and a half to go opening quarter. Gibson finds a hole. Gibson to the 19 yard line. Cedric Gibson, sophomore, Summerton, South Carolina, adds 14 yards. And Furman with a very nice drive going as they are threatening here as we come to the close of the opening quarter. And look at Gibson here. He hits it up in there, shows speed to the outside. It looks like he will be alternating with Derek Carter most of this game. But thus far, the big runs have come from Cedric Gibson. 
I can see him getting the ball at least 20 times today. Straight ahead, Felton. Keeps churning. That pops up the football. Furman recovers in the end zone for a touchdown. Number 72, Brian Lagus was there. 81, John Rust was there. We'll check to see who gets credit for the touchdown. But what a break for Furman. And Jerome Felton, tough, tough inside runner. He refused to go down, Bob. He was doing everything he could in his power to get into the end zone. Defender snatched the ball out of his hands, but luckily those offensive linemen following the play recovered his fumble. Yeah, That's those, a good thing. Those good hands guys. <laughs> Scott Beckler with the PAT and the Furman Paladins have the lead in Statesboro. Felton losing the football, but the tight end John Rust recovers for the score. Furman leads it 7 nothing. You're looking at John Rust who just recovered that fumble in the end zone for the touchdown. His fourth touchdown this season. He's caught three balls for scores and now recovers the fumble in the end zone. Teddy Kraft is deep for Georgia Southern. Kraft running up. He'll take it at the 16. Return to the 24. Let's take a look at that scoring drive. Furman going on nine plays. This was the only pass completion of the drive. 11 yards to spray. Gibson was outstanding as the primary running back, and then the big break as Rust recovers it in the end zone. And Rust is a very big part of what Furman does on offense. At tight end, he's leading this team with 24 receptions. That's his fourth time, fourth touchdown. He was following the play like he should. Very good move by him. Austin breaks a tackle and bounces over the 35 to the 37. 13 yard gain before Gary Nelson brought him down. That touchdown by Furman seemed to take a little of the starch out of the crowd here at Paulson Stadium. But Jermaine Austin trying to get him back on their side with that run. And Jermaine Austin is one of the guys that can get this crowd back into the game. First down on that run. They're used to this guy picking up at least 6.6 yards .6 carry. Let's see if he can continue to do that. Foster to the 39. Again, Nelson the tackle. Foster shaking off the effects of that hit that uh, seemed to work on his knee a little and injure it. Perhaps uh, the ankle as well. And so far, Foster this afternoon in running the football has carried it five times for 35 yards. And very interesting, Bob, when you have two basically running back, quarterback with over 1,000 yards and a running back with over 1,000 yards, they both want the ball. And they both expect to get the ball at least 20 times today. On the toss, Andrews. Nine yard pickup for the red shirt freshman from Swainsboro, Raja Andrew. Nelson piling up the tackles for, for Furman. First and 10 for the home team at the 48. And it's a must that Georgia Southern get some type of drive going in this possession. They cannot afford to get 14. 21 points behind Furman. They're down by seven now. They need to answer. This may very well be the final play of the first quarter. Austin into Furman territory at the 49. Jermaine Austin, over 5,000 rushing yards in his career, the 14th running back all time in 1AA history. To accumulate 5,000 yards. That will be the end of the opening quarter in Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern hosting the number one team in the country, the Furman Paladins. And at the end of one, Furman leads 7 0. Number one, Furman leads number 14, Georgia Southern 7 0. At the start of the second quarter, both these clubs pile up a ton of yards and a ton of points. 
in the Southern Conference. See Furman number one in scoring. Georgia Southern right behind. Same holds true in total offense and third down conversions. But just a 7 0 score at the end of one as Foster goes back to pass, shakes a tackle, and he's got some running room to the outside. Freeman chasing. And Foster knocked out of bounds by Thacker. Very athletic play by Jason Foster. He was stopped behind the line of scrimmage and showed his ability to get rid of a West, look Wesley at him here. Bray had him wrapped up. Let's go all over him. And look at that athletic ability. Now watch this speed. He turns the corner looking for daylight. You know, this quarterback has to do those type of things all day to move the sticks and put pressure on the outside linebackers of Furman. 23-yard gain, and Foster breaks a tackle at the 10. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Jason Foster once again shows his athletic ability at quarterback, making people miss. Very elusive type of quarterback, and he is running that triple option to perfection right now. Look at him. That's, that's a quarterback run all the way. One defender, two defender. He made three, four defenders miss to get into the end zone. That's what they expect out of quarterback Jason Foster today. With over a thousand yards rushing, he has to make these type of plays to keep Georgia Southern in this game all day. Jonathan Dudley with the extra point. Foster, 58 yards rushing, helps Georgia Southern tie it against number one Furman on FSN South. These guys know how to get on TV. So you take a great quarterback, an Italian Rupert Murdoch, FSN, Australia, the whole bit. I mean, it's working. And the 7-7 game right now here in Statesboro. And there's the man, Jason Foster. 26-yard touchdown run. His 17th rushing touchdown of the season. 84 yards rushing for the afternoon. And on the return for Furman, Middleton. He breaks clear. Middleton off to the races. One man to beat. A terrific return by William Middleton. It's Furman right back in business. A 65-yard kickoff return. And let's look at William Middleton here. A freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, you know, all over the place. Sees this scene, gets it up in there. All he has to do is outrun Lewis Barr. Barr misses the tackle. If he could have kept his balance, that was six points. Missing defenders, he's a very elusive type of guy right here. Great returner. He's leading this team in return yardage right now. If he is able to do that, not only on, the, on kickoff, but any other thing that he's doing, he could be a factor in this game as well today. Let's take a look at that scoring drive for Georgia Southern and it was all quarterback Jason Foster. As we mentioned it's put together 84 yards total in the game. This is the touchdown run. And that tied the game at seven. Six plays 76 yards. As Georgia Southern has tied this one at seven but Furman after the great kick return has it in excellent field position at the Georgia Southern 36. Engel Martin going back to work, rolling, throwing, and it is complete to Sprague on the near side. And he's out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's a nine-yard gain. Here with the tackle. And with that great return by Middleton, it sets up plays like this. Look, Martin, outside, nobody giving him any kind of trouble, no kind of contain on the outside. Easy throw. He guns it to Sprague, pick up eight yards, second and two. That's great for the Furman's offense. Felton. And Six yards and a first down. And, Bob, when you have a punishing, bruising fullback like Jerome Felton, he's going to pick up two, three yards every time he touches the ball. Looks like he may be injured here. I wonder if we just uh, 
had that hand. As you see the right hand is taped. Seems to be wincing as he's trying to flex that hand. But we can rest assured a six foot 252 yard fullback pound fullback rather is not going to be out the game long with a hand injury. He's been punishing the linebackers of Georgia Southern since this game started. He'll take a playoff but you can rest to believe he'll be back in the game. I think he just the football fell on his. Um, look like the football injured in there probably the tip of the ball. But Felton will be back. Mays and Joyce, the setbacks. This is Brandon Mays straight ahead, 10 down to the seven. Boy, one of the great stories in college football, Brandon Mays picks up 15 yards the first time he touches the football. And Brandon Mays, special story on him. Obviously, he has to. Obviously, he has some medical issues, but Brandon Mays comes in, picks up 15 yards, moved the chains. That's exactly what Furman needed just now with their punishing fullback Felton on the sideline. We'll check in with Corey Kessler in a moment for more on that Mays story. He stays in the game at tailback. Gets the football again. Stacked up, no gain. 7-7 as we send it down to Corey. Yeah, that's right, guys. An absolutely unbelievable story. Brandon Mays, the tailback for Furman, qualifies as a medical miracle in the sport of football. He battled back from life-threatening disease, had his entire digestive system reconstructed, lost 50 pounds two years ago, went from 190 pounds down to 140, had all but six inches of his large intestine removed, battled all the way back. He's one of the strongest players on the team today. That qualifies as a miracle. His head coach calls him the miracle man. He's an inspiration to his team. And he's a dynamite football player. Very now a timeout has been taken by Furman. Brandon Mays, senior from Arden, North Carolina. Bobby Lamb gathers the offense. We're tied at seven in Statesboro on FSN. The Eagles and the Paladins tied at seven. And after the timeout, Furman getting set to come out. This week's TIAA Prep Student Athlete of the Week is Diana Thomas. Remember the Appalachian State Volleyball team that won three road matches last week. She's got a 4 0 in exercise science from Mobile, Alabama. Mark pitches late, out of bounds. A penalty flag, and you talk about a dangerous attempt by Mark. A.J. Bryant defending. Very dangerous pitch just now by Martin, but again, he's inside the 10 yard line trying to make something happen with his feet. Would have done better tucking that one in and calling it a day. Look at Martin. He tries to turn the corner. Thought he had a seen bad, bad, bad pitch there. Luckily, the sideline was his friend. Look at sideline is his best friend right now because Mooring was all over that pitch. And a forward lateral, so the penalty flag. Illegal forward pass, number 15, offense. Five-yard penalty, loss of down, third down. So that really is the tough part about that penalty is the loss of down. Pushes the football back to the eight. Down to Corey. Guys, uh, it looks like you were absolutely right. Uh, Felton was complaining about his index finger. The trainer told me it is possibly broken. They're going to try to stabilize it. Most likely, he will be back in the game. Third and goal. Martin running. Throws. Touchdown. As Joyce made the grab. Engel Martin being very creative that time. Now a penalty flag has been thrown at the six yard line. And the penalty is against Furman, so take the points off the board. And I think Martin got just a little bit too creative here. I thought he was going to try to run it into the end zone. A forward pass with his left hand. 
Look at this pass. Left hand kind of a pitch to Ryan Joyce into the end zone. Illegal forward pass. He was past the line of scrimmage. Pass, number 15. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Loss of down. Fourth down. And that's two mistakes by Martin inside the 10 yard line, which is uncharacteristic of him. He's a senior. Those are the type of plays that he does not generally make. But again, playoff type atmosphere, trying to create some type of uh, momentum for his team to score a touchdown. Let's see if they get this field goal. Scott Beckler, 29 yard attempt, and it's long enough. It is good. 29 yard field goal for Beckler puts Furman back in front, 10 to 7. And the point of that drive, Bob, was to put points on the board and answer what Georgia Southern did. The way Jason Foster is running up and down the field right now, I think he has like 84 yards rushing. Firm the needed to answer, and they answered by putting three points on the board. That bodes well for them. Now their defense has to step up and come up with some type of play that's going to shut this vaunted triple option down that Georgia Southern is attacking Furman with right now. Now Bobby Lamb, you see him gesturing on the sideline. He was talking about the first penalty against Engel Martin. He thought that was a toss forward and should have been a legal play, but the referees saw otherwise. And 10-7 is the score. Furman settles for the field goal. And anytime they take seven points off the board for three, every head coach in America will be lobbying to try to get those points put back on. It looked like it was an illegal forward pass. I think the refs got that one right. Coach Lamb just has to settle for those three points. Teddy Kraft is deep along with McCutcheon. Whip kick. That's touched a live ball. And for Georgia Southern, A.J. Bryant falls on it. Let's take a look at those two plays in question. And it looks like Martin is there, but clearly it shows that it was a forward pitch. The ball goes out of bounds. No harm done. But the second one, you know, he tried to pitch it with his left hand. I think Coach Lamb was arguing that he was throwing the ball to, to Well, the second one, back. he was past the line of scrimmage. He was so. past the line of scrimmage, so neither one of them will count today. Now Georgia Southern has it first and 10 at their own 28. Austin. Breaking into that secondary, a strong run for Jermaine. 18 yards takes the football to the 46. And Thacker and Duncan finally made the tackles for Furman. And Jermaine Austin once again in between the tackle type of running back. Let's look at it here. Austin sees his gap. That's the dive play that we've been talking about. The fullback has to be able to miss, make someone miss or run over someone to make that dive play effective. And if Austin as we check the pitch now, it comes to Jefferson. And he's knocked out of bounds at the Furman 46-yard line after a nine-yard gain. If Austin can break through that first line of scrimmage activity and get a couple of steps of steam, he is hard to bring down. He is a load to bring down. The coaches said once he gets going, between the tackle type of running backs typically love to punish secondary people. And if he gets it going past that first wave, and we mean outside where the linebackers are lined up right now, the secondary firmer will have a rough time bringing him down. Foster tripped up. A nice hit by Andrew Jones. I don't know if he's ever going to win a gold glove, but he can sure play linebacker. These are the two. The bash and dash, if you will, of Austin and Foster. And both players today are, are getting it done on the ground. Foster has carried it for 86 yards. Austin, 47 each, has carried it eight times. And when you have two players with over 1,000 yards rushing, they know how to run the football. Jefferson. That's a nine-yard gain. 
William Freeman and Wallace Artis combining on the stop. Georgia Southern getting a little momentum on this ground game. And again, I think right now, Georgia Southern have been attacking the outside linebackers and corners of Furman most of the game. That opens up the dive play for Jermaine Foster or Brandon Andrews. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna try to keep Furman off balance right now. Brandon Andrews with that last carry, over 1,000 yards for Brandon in his career. You'll recall last year when Austin was hurt in the opener at Georgia, Andrews came in and really did a terrific job for the Eagles, carried the football 20 times against the Dogs at Stanford Stadium. Here's Foster to Austin, tumbling his way over the 30 to about the 27-yard line. Jeff Fambro with the tackle for Furman. And as a senior running back, Brandon Andrews knows his role on this football team. He knows he will get you know, five or ten carries per game. He knows he has to make the best of those carries. He's a very good spot duty running back. Payton, award list, features, of course, three men from this league. To the 23-yard line goes Lanon Jefferson out of Guyton, Georgia, averaging well over nine yards per carry this season. Austin Holmes, the left cornerback, with the tackle. Furman with the Holmes there. He's from Jacksonville, Florida, but they feature several Georgians on this roster, 36 in all, and six of them start. So a chance to play here in the Peach State against Mike Seawalks, Georgia Southern Eagles. Foster. to the 19 and that's going to be a first down for the home team Roy Ravenel the tackle and what Furman is not doing defensively is they are not being disciplined with their reads when you are trying to defend the triple option everybody on defense has leads, reads and keys that they must follow when one person break down it bodes for a big run on the offensive side of the ball. Georgia Southern keeping it on the ground exclusively in this drive. Brandon Andrews to the 12. An eight yard pickup as Freeman and Thacker combined for the stop. But Georgia Southern really getting the ground game rolling now. And look at Andrews between the tackle type of running back as well up the middle. And look, he's carrying defenders with him right now. That's four or five defenders that he's trying to push the, the, the power forward. I tell you what, Andrews and Jermaine Austin will make their living today between the tackles for Georgia State. 184 rushing yards for the home team. Andrews plows his way inside the 10 to the 8. And that is going to be another Georgia Southern first down. It'll be first and goal. As the Eagles trail it by three, 9.22 remaining in the second quarter. Capacity crowd at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. To watch number one Furman, number 14 Georgia Southern. Furman has won only once here in seven tries. They've got a 10-7 lead, but the home team is marching. Foster. Behind the Austin block to the five. And it looks like Georgia Southern has this triple option working properly today. Foster and Jermaine Austin have been getting big yardage every time they go. You know, the triple option is, is just working today. And it's up to Furman to try to shut this thing down some type of way. In the red zone, Georgia Southern. 84% this season, 36 of 43 with 32 touchdowns and four field goals. Looking for six here is Austin as he plows his way to the goal line. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown Georgia Southern. That is just good old fashioned. Put your head down and plow your way to the goal line football. And Jermaine Austin is the guy that can get you those five or six tough, tough, tough yards up the middle. 
He is so glad to get in the end zone. Been punishing linebackers all game. That's his reward. Six points. He's a very happy running back right now. Jonathan Dudley in to kick the PAT. And that one is good to make it a 14 to 10 Georgia Southern advantage. The great one. From Darien, Jermaine Austin plows in for the score, and Georgia Southern now leading number one Furman. A timeout on the field at Paulson. It's 14 10 Eagles on FSN South. Jermaine Austin. Georgia Southern has taken a 14 10 advantage. Trying to knock off the number one team in the country and keep their playoff hopes alive. Ten carries, 54 yards. Austin with the first score today. Foster has also added a touchdown as Georgia Southern with its vaunted ground game rolling now and leading it by four. Jonathan Dudley to kick it off. and middle to the deep men for Furman. This is going to be taken by an up back of the 20. Another big return out to the 40-yard line, maybe the 42. As for the Paladins, Brantley Kendall had the return. Let's take a look at the scoring drive for Georgia Southern. And all of it coming on the ground. Austin was spectacular. And look at how hungry Austin is here. He refused to not get into the end zone. If he is able to shred the upfront guys of Furman like that, it could be a long day defensively for Furman. Tenth rushing touchdown for Austin this season. And the Paladins come back with Derek Carter. And the Georgia Southern defense is a bit inspired now. And they make a nice hit on first down. John Mooring coming over to apply the tackle. And you see, and you see what this ball controller look, hit it up in there, mooring all over the place. Just an outstanding linebacker. Five or six people putting a hat on Furman's running back. That long scoring drive by Georgia Southern has inspired their defense. Let's see if their defense can keep this thing going. Mooring last year's second team All Southern Conference. He'll be a first team All League selection this year. Now, play is halted. Timeout, Furman. Furman takes the timeout. That stops the clock with 7.44 remaining in the second period. Second timeout used by Furman as we check in down on the field with Corey Kessler. Yeah, that's right, guys. It's not surprising that we're seeing a seesaw battle. One team in the lead, the other team taking the lead, not only because Georgia Southern needs to win this game to get into the playoffs in the postseason, also Furman wants to maintain that number one, but also because of recruiting. When you think about Furman's roster, they have more than 30 players. Of course, they're located in South Carolina. More than 30 players on their roster are from the state of Georgia. So for Furman to come in here and win on Georgia Southern University, University's campus would mean a lot for recruiting. Also, it would mean a lot for Georgia Southern if they pull out the win. Guys? These two have such a rich history that began back in 1985 in the 1AA National Championship game. And every year, you can expect to see these three clubs at the top, Appalachian playing at LSU today, and an interested party with the outcome of this game. They beat Furman earlier, so they're rooting for Georgia Southern big time. But two great programs and a terrific league. Some of the best one double A football in the country is played annually in the Southern Conference. Angle Martin handing it off to the 46 yard line as Carter is tackled by Rutledge. And the SOCON Conference has to be proud of these two teams. You know, Furman and Georgia Southern's playing tough football. Just look at this play here. Running back, hits it up in there, but look at the hats of the Georgia Southern defense. They're inspired right now. They're trying to make Furman go three and out. Third down. Martin. Carter's got it. 
but not close to a first down. And hop at the tackle. And once again, the pursuit of Georgia Southern's defense right now is fantastic. Martin was trying to get the ball out in the flat on a quick little out pattern, but it was covered. And Georgia Southern's defense right now, Lewis Barr on the corner, McBride on the other corner, they're basically covering the wide receivers for Furman right now all over the field. Fourth down. Will he kick it? Oh, a whistle. Timeout. Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern will take the, the timeout. So they use their second, each team with one remaining here in the first half. 624, the time remaining in this second quarter. Well, we talked about the great history between Furman and Georgia Southern. 85, it started with the great come from behind win by Georgia Southern to win the national championship 44 42 Bobby Lamb was the quarterback on that team they met again December 17 1988 Holt Arena in Pocatello Idaho late third quarter Furman's Dwight Sterling capping an 80 yard drive with this five yard touchdown run Furman led by 11 then in the game's final seconds Furman's All-American linebacker Jeff Blankenship with the interception that sealed the win Furman beat Georgia Southern 17 to 12. Furman held Georgia Southern's powerful offense to only 198 total yards and forced three turnovers in that game. Bobby Lamb was an assistant coach at that time, and those two meetings in 85 and 88 helped jumpstart a terrific rivalry in college football. Later, of course, Georgia Southern joined the Southern Conference, and they now meet annually, and we've had a dandy so far today. 14-10, Georgia Southern. Martin Will Pooches. No one back. It's going to get a roll in Georgia Southern's favor through the end zone. Touchback brings it out to the 20. And Georgia Southern, which has done such a great job on its last two possessions controlling the football, get it back with six minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And right now, Georgia Southern's running game has gotten everybody on defense fired up. This week on Fox NFL Sunday, the Falcons look to keep pace in the NFC South as they take out the Dolphins. Panthers battle the Bucks or the Bears take on the Saints. Giants 49ers Sunday on Fox. Now some laundry. Penalty against Georgia Southern coming up. Prior to the snap, all start. Offense, number 62, five-yard penalty, still first down. Right tackle, Russell Orr, the guilty party. Back to the 15, first and 15. The first penalty of the game against Georgia Southern. And that's a big key because that's a department where the Eagles have been hurt this season, particularly the McNeese game here. Penalties really cost them that game. And right now, Bob, the front line of Georgia Southern exploding off the ball every play. And it's and a young line. You've got Jensen, a sophomore, Estrada, sophomore, or a sophomore. Look at the offensive line there. Watch them extend themselves and fly out. And look, it opens the hole up for Jermaine Austin and now he's in the secondary. We talked about earlier the secondary guys don't want to see him. But they see him front and center here up to the 36 first down. Freeman and Nelson the tacklers. And Estrada, Lance Wayne, Chad Moat, Russell Orr, Marquise, all those guys right now are blowing the front Four of Furman off the ball. Look at them. They're all up here. They're on their knees, still scrapping for yards. They are making it easy for Austin and Andrews to run up the middle right now. Andrews is in for Austin. Here's Foster. Pulled down from behind and a penalty flag, maybe a face mask. Andrew Jones, the tackle.
up to the 38 yard line and the question of the penalty after that. I believe we got a face mask Bob. Yes we do. On Jones you'll see it. Yeah Jones Jones was trying to grab something I guess when a quarterback runs a 4 3 8 you're trying to grab anything you can. He made a mistake by grabbing Foster's face, face mask. mask. Defense. Number 49. Five yard penalty results in a first down. Five eleven should have been Andrew Jones 41 the guilty party out to the 44 yard line first down and two yards to go Andrew picks up another first down out to the 47 Nelson Made the stop, but Furman's defense uh, back on their heels just a bit. They're having a hard time containing that line surge, the big splits, and Georgia Southern cracking up this triple option. And the offensive line of Georgia Southern right now is controlling tempo. They're giving the running backs for their team opportunities to pick up five or six yards per carry. Often back in the game. Into Furman territory at the 49. It appears to me, Bob, that Georgia Southern does not think Furman's defensive front can stop them from running the football today. Inside, outside, it does not matter. Foster's able to turn the corner. Jermaine Austin is able to run up the middle. You know, if they keep this up, this triple option is going to put several more points on the board. Eagles 14, Paladins 10. Foster back to Pants. And it is complete. Wonderful catch, Teddy Kraft. Or is it? That's going to be McCutcheon, 86, not 85. The 6 1, 164 pound junior making the grab. And you see what a great running Grant game does. He fakes it to Austin, and look, the middle of the field opens up. Crossing pattern, wide open, a good running game, opens up your passing game. He took advantage of it. Foster. As Austin led the way with the block. And right now, Bob, Jason Foster is in complete control of this football game. He's able to create opportunities for his teammates with his feet. Look at that. Fake to Austin, follows him into the hole a few seconds ago, threw a ball downfield. He is feeling good about his offensive output right now. Let's see if he can continue. Foster. Spin move. Inside the 15 to the 12. Really running the ball well. Jason Foster picks up 12 more yards for Georgia Southern. And that is just being an athlete at quarterback. You know, he turned the corner, and look at the defender. Breaks down, but guess what? Whoop, I'm gone. I'm gone. Picks up an additional five yards. That's what Jason Foster can do for this football team all day. Andrew to the nine. And when you have a quarterback that rushed for over a thousand yards, he did not get those yards running up the middle. He has enough speed to put pressure on the corners and the outside linebackers, and thus far he's able to turn up field just about any time he wants. Jason Foster is having a very good, solid game right now. 13 carries, 118 yards for the sophomore. Maynard. He'll be marked down at the three. Marquise Maynard, sophomore from Sonoya. And an injured Furman Paladin. With a minute 50, a minute 47 remaining in the second quarter. And 
Foster just turns around and pitches the ball to the to the running back. But guess what? That play has been there all day as well because simply right now, Georgia Southern is in control offensively of the tempo and everything else that's happening in this game right now. Furman don't have an answer. A little toss yeah. sweep, and you see the the block that leveled Shelton Riley. He got his bell rung. The junior from Charlotte's going to walk off the field under his own power. And strong safeties don't like to be hit like that. The corner should have called a crackback block just now. I got a feeling Sheldon Riley is going to have some words with his corner, Austin, Austin Holmes, when, when they both get to the sideline. Kraft splits out wide to the bottom of your screen. Foster at quarterback with Andrews behind him. It's going to be Foster. Loose ball. Furman has it. The Paladins recover in the end zone. Rico Scott with the big recovery, and what a turn of events. Georgia Southern marching the length of the field. Looked like they were going to take a, a lead of 11 points. But instead, Foster loses the football. The Paladins recover, and it remains 14 to 10. And it, you know, it looks like to me that he was in the end zone. Let's look at it here. You know, did he cross the line? Did he break the plane? Tough, tough, tough call right there for Jason Fox. Angle Martin, the penalty flag is dropped at the 18. Let's take one more look at Foster. Prior to the snap, Paul Stark, offense, number 76, five-yard penalty, still first down. And look at it. It looks like Foster broke the plane there. And then the ball came out. If he broke the plane, that should have been touchdown, Georgia Southern. And that's exactly what Mike Seawalk is saying. And <laughs> they played it on the, on the screen here in the st stadium. And that's why all the fans were booing and now it's going to be Furman ball to 15 first and 15. Let's look at it here. There's Foster. He's across the line should have been touchdown Georgia Southern. I think that's one the officials missed if they had instant replay that would have been touchdown for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Bob. No question. So it remains a 14 to 10 game. Huge break for Furman. Martin giving to Carter. Nothing there. Each team with one timeout at its disposal. But you know, sometime during a game, even a play like that can keep your team inspired. And it looks like right now, Georgia Southern's defense is saying, you're not going to get this first down. We're going to get the ball back, and we're going to make you go three and out. Carter stumbled when he got the ball from Martin. Just the opposite of what Furman Front, front four have been doing on defense. Georgia Southern's up front guys, Sherman, Prance, Taylor, Beard, those guys are penetrating deep into Furman's backfield. The running game for Furman has been non existent since Jerome Felton been out the game. 14 10, Georgia Southern with 39 seconds remaining. And the Eagles burn their final timeout of the half. We still see Coach Seawalk 
running, walking up and down the sideline. He wants that touchdown back because he, he knows he ain't gonna get it. <laughs> he's not going to get it. But he knows going into half 21 to 10 would have been great for his football team. So he's not going to let that rest. 39 seconds. At the end of the half, Corey Kestel will be talking to Coach Seawalk as the Eagles exit the field. 14 to 10 leaders at the present time. Well, let's see what Bobby Lamb's got up his sleeve if he decides a little trickery is in order. He's way back on his own 17. He may play it close to the vest. And he's got a dandy playmaker in Ingle Martin. Throws it, complete to rush the tight end. And great hit out to the 28, shy of the first down. John Mooring, we've called his name all afternoon. Boy, he has a nose for the football. Big time nose for the football. Play action fake, quarterback boot, and look at this big hit by John Mooring. That's why this kid has 78 tackles and three interceptions thus far this year. He is a sideline to sideline defender. That's and that is. will be the end of the first half here in Statesboro, Georgia. Capacity crowd and then some here at Paulson Stadium to watch it. Number one, Furman trailing. Number 14, Georgia Southern, 14 to 10 here at the half. Mike Seawalk is going to talk to Corey at some point. But first, the head coach is going to chomp away at the referee, Ed Rhodes, about the touchdown that was not given to his ball club. Now we're going to see what kind of a track star Corey Kessler is if he can get over there and talk to Seawalk <laughs> before he exits the field. But Mike is giving the referee a piece of his mind. And now we send it down to Corey. With head coach Mike Seawalk of Georgia Southern, coach, what ha what were you talking to the referees about that end zone play? Absolutely. I mean, I thought that thing was in the end zone. I mean, you cannot do it like that. You batter your dang tag off like that, get it down there in the goal line. That kid goes in there and gets these two yards in the zone. They don't give it to you. We didn't do a better job holding on to the football. What are we doing? Defense is doing a nice job. Offense, we got to keep turning on the ball. We're not getting many kicks to the can, so you got to make sure every possession is important to you. And that possession right there was very important to us, and we didn't get the right call. Nonetheless, coach, you're up 14. Gonna right. They're going to be all right. You heard it. They are into it, folks. This is a very big football game. As you see the play that Mike was talking about, clearly quarterback Foster into the end zone by a good two yards and then lost the ball. But the play was ruled a fumble lost, and it remains a 14 to 10 game. Everything we thought with the Eagles hosting Furman and a 14 to 10 halftime score. We'll be back with more in a moment on FSN South. Kentucky. After a beautiful day in South Georgia, a spectacular sunset in Statesboro. 14 to 10 is our halftime score here at Paulson. Welcome back, everybody. Bob Rathman, Curtis Bay Ham with you. We'll be checking in with Corey Kessler in just a moment. As advertised, a whale of a football game. Exciting football game. Both of these teams realize that there's big time implications on who loses this game. Georgia Southern rushing the football, 252 yards rushing thus far in this half. If they can continue that, they can control this football game with the rushing. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. Furman scored first on the John Rust fumble recovery in the end zone. Georgia Southern tied it. Jason Foster from 26 yards to make it 7-7. Furman added a field goal. Then it was Jermaine Austin scoring on this power drive, and that put the Eagles in front and then it looked like Foster had scored but that was ruled a fumble. Very very controversial play. Coach Seawalk went crazy on the <laughs> sideline because he knows points in this game is hard to come by. Our Food Lion halftime stats and we call your attention uh, to the yardage and you mentioned it Curtis the rushing 252 for Georgia Southern. Check the time of possession 18 20 to 11 40 and uh, Keep in mind that the Furman Paladins only snapped the football 25 times in that first half. They will get the football to start the third quarter as we go down to the field and Corey Kessler. 
Yeah, that's right, guys. Of course, Coach Seawalk was fuming about that one play call. I asked Coach Bobby Lamb from Furman what he thought about the fumble recovery. He said he was too far away from the play to see exactly what happened. He'll go with the referee's call. I asked him what he told his players at halftime. He said, hey, guys, we're not playing too well. We have got to play better in the second half if we expect to come out of here with the win. We'll see what happens. And we're ready to go with this third quarter. And this kick is going to sail out of the end zone. So I would say Curtis a very big possession for Furman. If Bobby Lamb is indeed worried about the way his ball club responded in that first half then he's got to be concerned about keeping his defense off the field with a ball control offense of some kind. Now that doesn't mean necessarily running the football but what it does mean is that Engel Martin and the offense they've got to stay out there a while. You can't be three and out. There's no way Farmer can be three and out on this series right now. And tripping up on the handoff is Gibson. Fumble. Georgia Southern pointing, but it looks like it's going to be Furman ball in second down, and it is. Not the way Furman wanted to start this half. Gibson has the football, gets tripped up, looked like by a blade of grass just now, falls down, ball comes out. Furman needs to make something happen offensively and it's up to Ingo Martin to make something happen. Second down. Martin looking to throw now flushed and take it down as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. With the tackle T.J. Rutledge the middle linebacker. And even though two plays have happened in this third quarter, Bob, it still looks like Georgia Southern's defense is still inspired about what happened at the end of the first half. Let's see if they can keep that enthusiasm this quarter because right now they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Furman, two of six on third downs this afternoon. Martin out of the gun, dumps it over the middle to Carter. To the 33 first down. Big play right there for the Paladins. And Martin has to, has to come up with plays like this. He is the leader of this offense. He has to make solid throws, safe throws right now. Try to pick up some first downs, move the sticks for Furman, try to take the momentum away from Georgia Southern's defense. That's what Martin has to do in this series right now. 14-10 Georgia Southern. Martin throws to his tight end Rust. And a huge gainer to the 29-yard line of Georgia Southern. John Mooring the tackle, but not before a 37-yard pickup. And, and Martin being the offensive leader that he is, he's making plays with his arm. Fakes ball inside to Jerome Felton. Tight end drag. John Russ, their leading receiver, heading down the sideline. They have to continue to mix it up to keep Georgia Southern off guard on defense. Jerome Felton, after injuring his finger in the first half, back in there. On the toss, it comes to Carter. And a penalty flag at the 23-yard line. Engel Martin with his efforts this afternoon moving up on the all time offensive yardage list at Furman will update those numbers with the penalty to be discussed. But you see the difference between Furman offense the first half Furman's offense this half offense number 19 10 yards from the spot of the foul repeat first down. Take a look at this block at the back. Yeah, uh, he clearly blocks in the back just now, but that cannot change the momentum of Furman right now. They need a first down. They need to get it in three downs, some type of way to keep this drive going. 
First and 20. Martin stops. Now throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Furman, Justin Stepp. Angle Martin making something out of nothing, and Justin Stepp hauls it in from 39 yards away. A tremendous reception. Furman back in front, 16 to 14. Very athletic play by Ingle Martin. Once again, he's the leader of this offense. He has to make those type of plays. Big time throw, he bought some time with his feet, saw his receiver, got the ball to him, touchdown. Scott Beckler to add the PAT. 17-14, Furman will take the break. Scrambling, Ingle Martin finding Justin Stepp, the junior. With the grab and a terrific catch in the end zone. Touchdown, Furman. Timeout at Paulson. It's the Paladins back in front. 17-14, Furman. 12.07 as you take a look. As the hero step made the reception in the end zone, he's got a big smile. Let's take another look at the Ingle Martin pants. And Engel just bought time with his feet, saw his receiver running free in the end zone, beat Terrence McBride. A lot of time to throw that football. He was able to deliver it on cue. Georgia Southern. On the return. McCutcheon. Out of bounds at the 22. Well, at halftime here, Georgia Southern celebrated its 20th anniversary of the 1985 championship. For more on that, we send it down to the field in Corey Kessler. Yeah, that's right, guys. I'm with Tracy Ham, the quarterback from that 85 championship team and the guy who threw the winning touchdown pass to Frank Johnson. First of all, guys, tell me what it means for you to be back from the 20th anniversary and to have a tribute on this field. Well, you couldn't write a better script playing Furman, had played Furman in the championship game, and now have an opportunity them coming in our house number one. It's just a, it's just a, a, a good situation, good environment today. Break you. Uh, I echo what Tracy said. Um, it's good to see that something we started 20 years ago has gotten bigger. It's still a big rivalry, and that it's got so much meaning, and that uh, we're able to come back and be a part of it. So many fans watching this game today are probably thinking about that 85 game and how you guys, not only the game, but the season, how you came back in that game. You came back from 22 points down. Describe to us, if you would, take us through that game, an incredible comeback, one of the best in college football history. Yeah, a, a couple of key things happened. Um, first, our defense stopped them three times in a row in the third, second half, and then we were able to, we made a move putting Frankie in the game and taking Ricky Harris out. And Frankie just was an immediate impact on the game because he caught the ball so well. You wouldn't even would have known he was a freshman in some of the plays he made. And then the other thing that stood out for me was the catch that Tony Belson made on fourth down, which kept the drive alive. So that was the, the thing that was key. When the ball went into your hands, Frankie, tell us, take us through the emotions you had when you caught that winning touchdown. Well, he threw it so hard and so fast, I didn't really have a whole lot of time to think about it. Um, once the ball got in the air, it seemed like it slowed down. But people don't realize this guy's a workaholic, and we did that over and over and over in practice. He would always grab me on the sideline and make me throw when I didn't want to throw. So, I mean, it was second nature. One final question for you. 40,000 yards in the CFL, Tracy. You're absolutely a future Hall of Famer in the CFL. What are you doing these days? Waiting to get into Hall of Fame, we know that's going to happen. What are you doing with yourself these days, uh, business-wise? Well, I work with a company called XOS Technology. I'm also involved in here in Statesboro with some commercial real estate. And I'm also part of a bank called First Southern National Bank. So I got a few things going on. I've been very fortunate. The Statesboro community has been real good to me. Good luck to the rest of you guys, and uh, congratulations on the anniversary of the game. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Corey. And uh, those two young men, a big, big part of building the tradition early here at Georgia Southern. Now Maynard on the toss. Takes it out to about the 39 yard line. It's going to be third down. Thacker making the tackle. Six national championships, eight Southern Conference championships, and 63 All Americans. And so great to hear the stories of what Tracy and Frank are doing after football, successful businessmen, and the pillars of the community here in Statesboro. And when you're from a program that's winning, you always want to come back. Yeah, yeah. The college that's the smart businessman part. Yeah, very and because smart. you're a hero here. <laughs> you always want to come back to that hometown. 
Austin. Oh, look at that effort. First down, Georgia Southern out to the 47. We've had the pleasure of watching Jermaine Austin these last few years here at Georgia Southern and in the Southern Conference. And uh, when he gets it rolling, he's just a joy to behold. And just look at him here. Takes three or four defenders with him. He wants the ball today because he knows the middle is real soft on Furman's defense. Foster. Nowhere to run that time. Riley the tackle. Very quietly, Jermaine Austin has compiled 92 yards in this game on 15 carries, one touchdown. And Austin generally gets his yards the quiet way. Why? Because he's a dive type of fullback that's going to pick up the five or six yards per carry and control the clock. And that's exactly what he's been doing all day. 17 14 Furman. Been moved by Andrews. Gain of only two. And just because Austin has been hitting it up in the middle, look here. Two defenders went with Jermaine Austin just now. Couldn't get to the outside on that play, but that's the respect that Furman inside linebackers and nose guards, their up front guys, have for the running ability of bruising fullback Jermaine Austin. Third and long. Foster makes the toss. He's under big time pressure, escapes. He wants to air it out, throws it, and it's complete at the 26 yard line. McCutcheon with the grab. <laughs> Well, McCutcheon did a smart thing, too, to come back for that football. Just great athletic ability from Jason Foster. He'll lose the rush. Let's take a look at it here. He'll lose the rush there, buys some time, sees McCutcheon. McCutcheon done one good thing here. He came back to the football. He was able to help his quarterback out big time by coming back to the football here and making that catch. Foster bags it down to the 23 yard line before Andrew Jones stopped him. We approach the eight minute mark of the third quarter. And Jason Foster is showing his complete package today. Athleticism is not a problem. He has those front four guys for Furman on their heels. When he goes back, they don't know if he's going to the outside or inside. He has Furman right where he's going, right now. Tenth play of the drive. Foster, oh, nice sidestep. Breaks three, keeps his feet to the five-yard line. Did you see that little juke? That turned it into a 20-yard gainer. Williams the tackle. But a penalty flag is down. Hold everything. And Foster here turns it up with another undefender miss. But one thing I see from Foster right now, two hands on the football. He's not going to let a fumble happen again, no matter what. Penalty against Georgia Southern. Wipe out the good play. Ed Rhodes, our referee. Illegal shift. Two men moving in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. And Bob, I would imagine Coach Seawalk had some words with all of his running backs and quarterbacks at halftime about holding on to the football. Foster had both hands on that ball. He was not going to fumble this time. 17-14, Furman. Foster. Did a very good job optioning Riley on that play. Thacker the tackle. 657 and counting. Third quarter, we welcome you to Paulson Stadium on the campus of Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia. With one of the biggest games of the day in college football, a 1AA matchup with number one Furman and their arch rivals, the Georgia Southern Eagles. Georgia Southern with the football third down 
and two yards to go at the Furman 19. Austin breaks free. Austin keeps driving. Austin to the three. Jermaine Austin is hitting it up in the middle, straight up the gut, all game. Let's look at him here. Those are the two guys, but let's look at what Austin is doing. Straight up the gut, one defender, two defenders, carrying the whole Farmers team with him. Inevitably, he got the touchdown. Jermaine Austin takes it in for the Eagles. And Georgia Southern is back in front, 20 to 17. Strong, tough running by Jermaine Austin. And you mentioned earlier, Bob, that these fans have grown accustomed to what Austin does week in and week out. He's showing it to them today. He knows the game is very important. He's running hard, very hard this game. Jonathan Dudley with the PAT. Ooh, no good. Boosted off to the right, and that keeps it a three point game. We may look back on that as a key play. Jermaine Austin taking it in for the score. Eagles missed the point after, and that makes it a three point spread. Jermaine Austin taking it in for the touchdown, his second of the game. 20 to 17 Georgia Southern now back in front with 644 to go Jonathan Dudley to kick it kick it deep number one is William Middleton from Atlanta and he's back there with number 13 Ryan Mickey six forty four left third quarter Middleton he's going to take a knee and that'll be a touchback just inside the end zone so Furman comes out and they find themselves down by three and I, I really believe Curtis is the same holds true. They've got to find a way now to keep the defense on the sidelines control the football and drive it. It's hard to do 80 yards every time but they must control the line of scrimmage for a little while here and give that defense a breather and they have a quarterback under center that has the ability to make plays with his arms and also with his feet. He knows they need first downs now. Let's see if he can be the field general. Martin out of the gun. Pressure from Mooring. The throw complete to Rust on the near side. And he's out of bounds at the 26. Bryant on the coverage. John Rust has been a big playmaker today. Recovered a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown. Caught a big ball for a long gainer earlier in this third quarter. Best and receiving tight end of the SOCON. And Martin again, strong throw to his tight end John Russ who is their leading receiver Martin knows if Jason Foster does it he has to come back with an answer that's what he's doing right now and the Martin gives to Jerome Felton six on this one and it's good to see Felton back in the game look like he has his finger heavily wrapped it was reported by Corey earlier that his finger may have been spraying really bad or broken. He's back in the game. He's coming out right now, but it's good to see this kid back in the football game. What is the latest Corey on Felton? Well, he was complaining about his uh, right index finger, as we mentioned before, and uh, the trainer told me that Felton, either it's dislocated or broken, they'll x-ray it after the game. It's heavily wrapped, so he should see significant playing time, as you already have seen he has. There's a long pass right there by Ingle to Carter take it over Bob Carter down the sideline at the 30 keeps his balance at the 20 he's got a chance to score penalty flag touchdown Furman and I believe the penalty may go against Furman it was thrown at the 20 hold everything a 69 yard gainer if it stands block in the back take the points off the board and that is a tough call for the firm's offense blocking the back offense during the run 10 yards from the spot of the foul 
Play results in the first down. First and 10 at the 30, and it's a 20 to 17 game. We'll take another look at the play because it was special. Look at the athleticism of Ingle Martin. The coaches said he worked hard all summer on his running ability. He just eluded several defenders, got the ball downfield. Too bad someone clipped in the back. Gain of four. And Bryant makes the tackle. And it's a very, very touching story about Brandon Mays earlier. It's just good to see this kid on the football field right now. Refreshing. You know, refreshing. How inspired do you have to be if one of your teammates went through that and now he's giving 110 percent? Touchdown, Furman. He walks into the end zone practically untouched. A 26-yard touchdown run for the human bowling ball, Jerome Felton. 23-20, Furman with the extra point coming up. Well, we've talked about the offense with ball control. They've been doing it with big plays. Big plays by Furman. That's what they're known for either in the passing game or with Felton in the running game. They're staying with their script. Scott Beckler, the kicker in for the PAT. Penalty flag. Kicks good. We'll see about the penalty. Remember, Georgia Southern has missed the PAT. Defense. Offsides. Number two. Penalties declined. Point's good. A 72-yard day for Felton. The last 26 coming on his 10th touchdown run of the campaign. And Furman goes back in front. We've got a timeout at Paulson Stadium. 5-12 remaining in the third. It's number one Furman in the lead. 24-20. Furman 24, Georgia Southern 20. 5-12 remaining in the third quarter. One more look at the wonderful touchdown run from Felton. And look at Felton. The coaches told me, Coach Lamb told me, at 252 pounds, this young man could turn the corner. And he, he almost had me laugh. And I said, Coach, can he get to the corner? He said, just watch it. He get a step on you, no one's going to catch him. It just showed that time. A short kick and a fair catch at the 34 yard line. Now Georgia Southern. Trailing by four with the football their dynamic duo of Foster and Austin. Quarterback Jason Foster 17 carries 131 yards and one TD. Fullback Jermaine Austin 17 carries 111 yards two touchdowns. Austin and Foster combining for 242 ground yards out of their 310 total. Austin's going to get a breather here as Foster decides to make the carry. Ravenel, Lamar's rather making the tackle as Austin may be going back in just a, a bit. Andrews was in there. Let's bring you up to date with what's happening elsewhere in the Southern Conference today, a 10-point win for Chattanooga over the Citadel, 31-21. Western Carolina with a very good defensive effort today, shutting out Wofford, 24-0. Andrews to the 43. And once again, Georgia Southern running their typical triple option, and with Foster and Austin 131 111 yards rushing typical of what those two players have been doing all season the number one number two rushes on the team showing why they're that today Andrews first down Georgia Southern at the 47 Brandon Williams the tackle 
Andrews has done a good job in relief this afternoon. Very respectable job, but I'm looking at these offenses now. They both have the other team defense on their heels. Furman's doing it with the pass. Georgia Southern's doing it with the run. Foster trying to get to the outside. Wiggled his way around one to would be tackler and he turns the gain into a first down at the 42 yard line. Bradley Williams got the tackle, but it was Artis who looked to have him wrapped up. 58. And just look at the athletic ability here of Jason Foster, making defenders miss, showing his quickness up and down the field. He's saying to himself as a competitor, if Martin can do it in the air, I can do it on the ground. First and 10 Furman, I'd rather Georgia Southern at the Furman 42 yard line. Brandon Andrews diving it down to the 38. Andrews, a senior from Swansboro High School. And it just looks like Georgia Southern's offense is playing inspired football today. They know what's on the line. They're laying it all out today. Be a lot of kids searching for their whirlpool after the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Foster. Jumping on his back, Ravenel. 24-20, number one Furman leading. We talked about it earlier, but if you're just joining us, it bears repeating Georgia Southern has three losses. And the conventional wisdom here in Statesboro around Mike Seawalk's ball club is a fourth loss today, and they will not be invited to the 1AA playoffs. It has gone back and forth. We've had four lead changes in the game. Jermaine Austin back in, but this time Furman is right there. Burnett also getting off the pile. Artis, 98, Taylor. This is going to force a, I believe, a timeout. Yes, Georgia Southern wants to talk it over. And with it being fourth and two, they can ill afford to make any mistakes right now. Because of that missed extra point, they're down by four points right now. And as Coach Seawalk said earlier, right at the half, every possession is key for them. They cannot afford to, put, they have to put points on the board right now. An official's timeout, you see the injured warrior, that's a strut of the left guard being helped off the field. The head coach Mike Seawalk, a great offensive lineman in his day, all ACC at the University of Virginia. Fourth and two with Georgia Southern trailing 24 20. Foster. Close. Close, close, close. All depends on the spot. I believe he got it. I believe he got it. The officials take time to bring out the chains. A pensive look from the stands. I don't think so. Oh no. Furman ball. So now with 129 remaining in the period, Georgia Southern loses the football on downs. And very good defensive stand by Furman right now. Great pursuit. Everybody making form tackles on Jason Foster because they know they could ill afford to let him break through. But my question is, you know, can they sustain this on offense? They give it to Felton, and he's taken down at the 37. Andrew Jones, the linebacker, we showed you Andrew on the sideline just a second ago. 
I mean, so happy to make that big hit. And this Furman team, they've been substituting liberally defensively. So they got a lot of guys, you know, really have been out there for a lot of plays. Georgia Southern, folks, has snapped the ball 62 times. Furman, 36. And Furman's got the lead. Nothing doing on this running play up the middle. Jerome Felton stopped by Willingham, number 11. Mooring, 47 in there. And right now, Martin knows if he can eat up some more of the clock, the third quarter is coming to an end. If he can get a long, sustained drive going right now and go into the fourth quarter, eat up some of the clock there, he can put a lot of pressure on Georgia Southern for the rest of the game. 24-20, final seconds of the period. Martin throws, and it's overthrown, incomplete. Intended for Grant Brigham. And stops the clock with 10 seconds left in the period. And great for Georgia Southern right now. They, they was able to hold, hold firm until a three and out. They'll get the ball back, try to sustain some type of drive going into the fourth quarter. Their running game is hitting on all cylinders right now. Look for that to continue. Angle Martin to kick it away on fourth down. Teddy Kraft deep for Georgia Southern. Martin boots it. Kraft fields it at the 24. Out to the 34-yard line. Three seconds remaining in the period. So Georgia Southern was able to get the football back. Three and out. 39-yard punt and a 12-yard return. So the nose of the football touching the 35-yard line. Final play coming up in this third quarter with the Eagles trailing 24-20. Foster. A couple of pump fakes. Out to the 39, a four-yard gain. The number one team in one double-A football, the Furman Paladins, on the road in a stadium where they have won only once in their history. A seesaw battle with homestanding Georgia Southern. At the end of three on FSN South, Furman 24, Georgia Southern 20. Today's game was brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers, driving the Carolinas by BB&T, Branch Banking and Trust, and by Food Lion, extra low prices. With Curtis Bayham, Corey Kessler, Bob Rathman, back in Statesboro, Georgia, 24-20 Furman, second and seven. to the 42. And right now, Georgia Southern will be trying to get a sustained drive, mixing the pass with the run, eat up some of the clock, and put some more points on the board because we both know that extra point that they miss could be very bad for them if they don't put more points on the board. Third and four. Foster. And Furman forces a punt. Real good defensive stand by Furman. They're not ranked number one in the country for nothing. They know they got to make some type of defensive stand right here because they could ill afford to let Georgia Southern run up and down the field, picking up first downs. But it looks like Georgia uh, Southern's going to go for it. Early in this fourth quarter, down four. They are not going to kick the football away. On fourth and one, Mike Seawalk says, I've got all the confidence in the world in my offensive line. Now, timeout. 
We'll take the break with them. 1342 left. A huge fourth down play coming up for GSU after this. Furman 24, Georgia Southern 20. Mike Seawalk deciding on the play. He's had terrific games from Austin and Foster this afternoon. 155 for Foster. Remember last week he set his career high with 178 rushing yards. Approaching that with still this the bulk of the fourth quarter to come. Austin sitting on 116. Will it be Foster? Will it be Austin? Or will it be someone else on fourth down and one for Georgia Southern? With the type of running back Jermaine Austin is between the tackles, fourth and one, he's one of the best three, four yard running backs in this country. I would give the ball to him and let him All make right. something happen up the middle Let's of the Let's see, I think they're gonna put Andrews in the game now. Austin is out, Andrews is in. On fourth and one. Foster straight ahead, he nearly broke it. How about that? First down in the at the Furman 49 yard line. Six yard gain. Always trustworthy quarterback sneak. <laughs> the line explodes off the ball and opens up the crease for Jason Foster. He was one tackle away from taking that one to the house. And I don't think anyone can catch this kid if he gets a step on. First and ten. Foster taking it down to the 46. William Freeman the tackle. We haven't talked a lot about William Freeman this afternoon. He's certainly been in on his share of plays. Started inside at linebacker for Furman, moved to the outside after a couple of games and Southern Conference preseason defensive player of the year the award he won last season and uh, he and Mooring are going to be two of the top candidates come the end of this regular season. Austin stacked up no gain maybe one yard. And Freeman has been playing solid football here. Let's look at him here. Inside, making tackles from the inside back of position, running sideline to sideline at the outside line back of position. And look at that form tackle. Perfect form tackle for this outside linebacker. Great player that'll probably have a chance to play at the next level. Foster has time. Throws to the sideline. It's going to be tipped, nearly intercepted. Getting his hands on it was Austin Holmes of Furman, number six. And this will bring a fourth down. Now Furman will punt with Dan, or rather Georgia Southern will punt with Dan Jordan to Justin Stepp. And that's a pass Foster should have never thrown. Austin Holmes had good, very good coverage. He threw in the crowd. He should have either made something happen with his feet or just throw it out of bounds. Fair catch at the 16 for Justin Steph. 11 51 remaining. Fourth quarter from Statesboro, Georgia. Bobby Lamb's firm and Paladins ranked number one for the first time since 1990 coming into this game. The winningest program in the history of the Southern Conference beat Georgia Southern to win the 1988 NCAA 1AA championship and to the championship game a grand total of three times. Engel Martin steps up and throws and a nice catch by Cedric Gibson. And this is a very big gut check for the Georgia Southern's defense right now. They can ill afford to let Furman get a sustained drive with the score being 24 20 right now. They have to stop Furman from putting points on the board. Taking on 14th ranked Georgia Southern today. 
Reform will make it seven out of eight. Gibson to the 25. And it appears that Furman is staying aggressive and not deviating from what they want to do. Look at this cutback by Gibson. Reads his keys, goes off of his outside tackle, block, hits it up in there, first down, move the sticks. That's what Furman does well. They mix the pass with the run. Looks like they're trying to sustain a drive right now. Martin under pressure. And it is complete on the far side to Ryan McKee. And we talked about Furman and putting drives together, but it's interesting that the last two Furman scoring drives lasted a grand total of five plays each. Now they went 80 yards on each occasion, but some big pass plays put Bobby Lamb's club in front, but they didn't really use that much time off the clock. Out of possession is in Georgia Southern's favor big time. Felton leaps his way close to a first down. I believe he has it at the 46. But Bob, you could attribute those big plays to quarterback Ingle Martin. He is comfortable in the pocket. Big time talent. He is able to read his keys properly. He understands what George Sutherland is trying to do to him. He's able to get the ball in places to make plays, picking up 15, 20 yards per pass reception, and he's scrambling and making sure he does not take a sack. Jerome Felton, 10 carries, 81 yards. Martin, too tall for step. But as you see, play action fake, rolls out, putting tremendous pressure on the outside linebackers and defensive ends of Georgia Southern. He is able to have clear throwing lanes, unimpeded to get the ball where he needs it to go. And until Georgia Southern can put someone in his face and break down those throwing, throwing lanes, he can complete a lot of passes today. Second and ten. Gibson. No way to run. It's a loss of a yard. Taylor the tackle. It's going to be third and 11. And Gibson tries to make something happen, but way too much penetration by the upfront guys of Georgia Southern. They was in the backfield. That play was doomed from word go. Big defensive play here for Georgia Southern. Furman, third and 11. Pressure. Martin gets away. Comes it to Gibson, or rather to uh, Carter, and it is shy of the first down. At the 40. Eight yard line, or the, the 43 yard line. And Rico Zachary is going to hear it from the coaching staff tomorrow. He had an unimpeded sack. Let's take a look at it here. Zachary has an unimpeded sack, is clear rush, and he lets Martin get away. But again, Martin showing his elusiveness with his feet now. Now he's back to punt the ball. He does everything for this Furman's team. High kick to Kraft, fair catch at the 13. A timeout with eight minutes and 39 seconds remaining. Georgia Southern with the football, trailing by four. When we the pressure now shifts to quarterback Jason Foster in the Georgia Southern offense, down four. And so far today, Foster has re responded to the pressure admirably. Yes, he has. Over 200 yards of total offense today, 166 rushing, 45 thus far in the air. He's putting a lot of pressure on that Furman defense to stop him from making big plays. Jermaine Austin wrestles his way to the 19. Ball control for Georgia Southern 
is paramount right now. They need to put points on the board. They're down by four. A field goal is not going to get it, Bob. They have to put seven on the board. Now, whether it comes this series or next, they need to pick up first downs and move the ball down here. Boston. Great tackle by Artis. Freeman also there. Slowly that clock's becoming a factor too. We're under eight to play. Definitely a factor. Again, Georgia Southern can ill afford not to pick up this first down. They're too deep in their territory to go for it on fourth down. This is one of the biggest plays of this contest. They got a full back in Jermaine Austin that can pick up two yards. Let's see if they go to him. Georgia Southern seven for 13 on third down. Foster. And he's wrapped up at the 25 yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. And Foster slow getting to his feet and limping. They've got uh, stuck with a hit on the calf or some muscle tightening. Wrapped up. And Foster followed his pullback. Jermaine Austin around the corner to pick that first down up. If they can't run it up the middle, they're going to try to catch you on the corner. And his big fullback led the way on that play. Darius Smiley is in at quarterback now for the Eagles. Seven minutes to go in the game. 24-20 Furman. Austin. Well, he's a guy you just cannot arm tackle. Too big of a load, too physical to bring down basically with one defender. That's why they love this guy here. He has been bruising and battering defenders for all of these years, for four years, and he will continue to do that the rest of the game. Austin limps off. Andrews in. Andrews. With the carry out to the 41. First down, Georgia Southern. But as we stated earlier, Brandon Andrews knows his role as a senior, and he is not much of a drop off from Jermaine Austin. In, in his career, over 1,000 yards rushing, he is a good second choice at fullback for this Georgia Southern football team. But neither Austin nor Foster appear to be close to coming back in. By close, we mean next play or two. Here's the toss coming to Maynard. They'll mark him out at the 45. And I'm. And let's look at Smiley here taking over for Jason Foster for a minute. He's able to run this offense fairly well, but I know on the sideline, whatever they need to do to get Foster back in the game, they're going to do. And here he comes. That's their two horses. That's who they're going to win this football game with if that's what the score indicates. Foster and Austin. Now, Jermaine back in. And it will be Foster out to the 49. Third down. And keep an eye on that clock. 547 and counting. And both of these players, Foster and Austin, may be experiencing some tightness in their legs. Foster, 28 carries, 176 yards. Austin, 22 carries, 130. They're carrying the load today. Jason Foster, all on the ground of this drive. That began at the 13-yard line, 24-20 Furman. The number one team trying to cement a Southern Conference championship. They have one defeat to Appalachian. That's how much yardage that Georgia Southern needs. A lot of green grass in front of them. Five minutes to go in the game. Foster rolling. A block on Freeman. There's a penalty flag in the play. Foster. Wiggling down to the 43, but that penalty to be decided. 
Flag thrown in the backfield. And William Freeman never gave up on that play. He got blocked by the, by the lead back, but he never gave up on the play. Ended up making the tackle. Let's see what this penalty is here. Illegal shift. Two men in motion. Hit snap. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That makes it first and 15, just the third penalty against the men of Mike Seawalk this afternoon for 14 yards. But this one hurts because of the time and circumstance. Georgia Southern down four and four and a half to play with a rolling clock. Austin. To the 45. It will be second down and seven. And Jermaine was able to pick up some of that yardage that they lost a few on that play just now. But I'm curious to know what type of passing package Georgia Southern has when it's under three minutes. Because well, one of the big keys in that option attack is lull you to sleep, lull you to sleep with the run, then boom, quick pass. We have not seen a passing attempt in this drive. Another run. Brandon Andrews to the 42, where it's third and about four. And that's where Furman, being the number one team in the country, has to be disciplined on defense. Because if they fall asleep and don't read their keys properly, Georgia Southern can fake the dive, pull back, and get the big one. Georgia Southern with 34 more snaps than Furman. That defense has been out there all day. Foster breaks a tackle. Foster to the 38 and very close to a first down. Boy, look at Mike Seawalk, the head coach. He's right out there trying to help the officials with a spot. Right now, Coach Seawalk is pushing that ball a couple of inches forward just by yelling. <laughs> and keep in mind, Mike Seawalk's ball club had a touchdown taken away. And maybe at least uh, through the Eagles eyes they should be ahead 27 24 that's not the case. In the first half as they stretch the chains an inch or two shy. So it is going to be fourth down and inches. This is the touchdown that we're talking about. Now keep your eye on Foster as he goes in in that second quarter. Breaks the plane with the football and then after he was two yards into the end zone. Fumbled the football. That play was ruled a fumble recovery for Furman. No touchdown for Georgia Southern. And it clearly showed on our replay that Foster broke the plane. Should have been a touchdown for Georgia Southern. Twenty four twenty. Fourth and inches. Foster. He's got it. Offensive line push up front just now. Got that first down for their quarterback, Jason Foster. And now the clock is a factor, Bob. It's under two minutes. And the Eagles with two timeouts remaining. If they continue to stick it on the ground, how many more cracks are they going to have at it here? Trailing by four. They've, they've got to make something happen pretty quickly. Foster. Quarterback draw to the 33. And again, that clock running down to 214. And you're looking at two teams that are basically spent right now. I'm looking at William Freeman on defense. Uh. 
you know the effort they've given they've both of them put both teams put up 150 percent effort today those young men are playing competitive football 14th play of the drive coming foster to pass foster to run foster breaks outside a penalty fly 20 15 10 5 touchdown georgia seven but a penalty flag to be decided Holding Georgia Southern. Oh, what might have been, says Mike Seawalk. And we know Coach Seawalk will not be happy with this call. He has been going after the referees all game. This is just something else he don't want to hear. Holding offense, number 66, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. So not only do they lose 10 yards, they don't, of course, get the touchdown, but they lose precious time off that clock down to a minute 44. Take a look and see if we can catch 66 on the hole. Distraught is the left guard. And that's center Lance Wayne. They call for holding. You know, it's tough as an offensive lineman. You've been playing hard all day, and to get your name called for a holding penalty, just don't sit right. Foster. He'll throw it. A bump. No flag. Was the contact premature? Holmes was defending. No flag. We're down to a minute 38 and third and 15. It looks like home has very good coverage on this play, but you have to look at the velocity of the ball. They could have ruled it was an uncatchable pass because both players jumped as high as they could and the ball still sailed over their head. Third down Georgia Southern Foster. Drops back. Looks. He's going to go to the end zone. And this is going to be caught down to the eight yard line. Chris Dickerson with a huge catch with a minute 30 to go. And Paulson is rocking. At the eight yard line, a 35 yard gain. It's first and goal. A the junior from Bartow with a tremendous catch. And Jason just throws this ball up and let his wide receiver make a play. Dickerson just out jumped the defender. He wanted the ball more on that play. He got the first down for his football team. Timeout. I believe Furman. Yes. Listen to this crowd. Georgia Southern trying to knock off number one Furman and this may be the play that saves them the completion to Dickerson takes it to the eight timeout at Paulson 71 seconds left Corey Kessler they're coming right at you absolutely they are I'm in the end zone that Georgia Southern is, is uh, rushing towards the Paulson fans are unbelievable here Bob you know their record at home is 139 and only 17 losses. We'll see if they can score in the next a minute and 11 and make it 140 and 17. First down and goal for Georgia Southern. Foster to the four. Keep an eye on that clock. 105. Now they stop it at 105. And it just looks like Jason Foster will take this game over right now. He has not given the ball up on the last few running plays. He is very tired, but he knows this is the biggest drive of this year. Their whole playoff future rests on what happens in the next 65 seconds. And even though you're tired and spent and you done played hard all game, this is a time when those athletes got to suck it up and say, I am going to get into this end zone right now because if they do that, 27-24, new ball game.
for Georgia Southern. The all time record at Paulson Stadium for this incredible program 139 and 17. Furman has one of those 17, but only one. A minute five remaining. The timeout story. Furman with one remaining. It is second down and goal to go for Georgia Southern inside the five at the four. Foster at quarterback. Austin at fullback. Jermaine. Jermaine Austin, touchdown. The extra point, a penalty. Furman jumps. The kick is good. They'll refuse the penalty. It's 27 20, Georgia Southern. And what other person to give this ball to than your in between the tackle dive fullback, Jermaine Austin? Look at that. Defenders bouncing off of him. He's hungry for the end zone. He got in there. He knew how important this three yards but look at it just bowling ball runs into the end zone scores that touchdown for his team Jermaine Austin was hungry for the goal line he took that one on in like he should do as a punishing bruising fullback and Bob but that's three touchdowns for Austin yes today sir. he has had a great game but it is not yet over 17 plays scoring drive 87 yards for Georgia Southern Austin's third of the day 12th of the season comes from four yards away Georgia Southern time of possession 38 to 20 my goodness but Furman has 62 seconds to work with and a field goal will tie it and we go back to that missed extra point by Georgia Southern is looming large and here it is right here with that miss giving Furman a chance on a long field goal to maybe send this into overtime. And getting back and back to uh, Austin, none of his touchdowns were easy. They were all tough, tough, tough yards to make, but some kind of way he got into the end zone once again. Now on the kick. The deep men. More firm and await. It's going to be Mickey and Middleton awaiting the Dudley kick, and here it comes. And it's a rolling end over under, taken at the 30. And a decent field position at the 39 with 59 seconds remaining. Now and they'll, they'll mark the clock now at 57.8. And with a quarterback like Ingle Martin at the helm, that's plenty of time for him to march his team downfield and at least get a field goal. Right. Oh, yeah, this guy's a magician. He's got Carter behind him. And a slot to the near side. Berman trying to pull it out of the fire. They're down three. Martin to go to work, and he dumps it over the middle of Carter. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and he's out to the 48. And very close to a first down. Let's see if they stop the clock. Now they do, yes. I thought it might be close enough to measure. And so they do stop it at 45.1. And we may see these officials put a few seconds back on the clock because. Oh, Furman called a timeout. Oh, they called timeout. Okay. Furman good. called timeout. They, he's two yards shy of the first down on the mark.
today's BB and T player of the game is Jermaine Austin. And on behalf of Jermaine, BB and T will make a contribution to the general scholarship fund of the Southern Conference. At the end of the year, the money will be divided among member institutions. Three touchdown day, and the big question before the house is will it be enough? 45 seconds left. Georgia Southern leading it by three. And Furman at its own 48 yard line. Second down. When you've got a guy like Ingle Martin at quarterback, you are not out of the game by any stretch of the imagination. throwing Sprague catching and wisely gets out of bounds to stop the clock at uh, 39 seconds officially and Ingle Martin right now is, is sitting back in the pocket let's take a look at it no rush whatsoever you give a quarterback like Ingle Martin that much time to locate a receiver it's going to get there every time and Georgia Southern has not had a lot of pressure on the quarterback today only a couple of times has he even been flushed out of the pocket. Now a new set of downs to work with in 39 seconds left. Martin out of the gun looking sideline and he's got his man Sprague out of bounds. Another first down for Furman and they're quickly getting into field goal range. McBride defending. And Georgia Southern's defense, they're on their heels right now. Look at Martin go to work. Surveys the field. Look at his receiver. Knows to immediately get out of bounds Georgia Southern needs to come up with some type of blitz package to put some pressure on Martin or he's going to pick them apart first and ten Furman and Martin looking going down the sideline it's going to be intercepted McBride with the pick and Engel Martin just put one up for grabs and it looks like to me they tried to blitz put a little pressure on Martin just now and look he threw it up for grabs McBride sitting there just that little pressure made him throw off of his After the back play, foot unsportsman line conduct defense excessive celebration at the distance. Now Furman is out of timeouts. 29 seconds remaining. The students and the crowd there in the corner by the end zone. Ready to rush onto the field. As Georgia Southern is seconds away from upsetting the number one team in the country. Welcome to Georgia. Southern football. This has been a great game. That will be the final play. Bobby Lamb comes across to shake the hand of Mike Seawalk. And the Georgia Southern Eagles have done it. They have knocked off Furman 27 to 24 and keep their playoff hopes alive. And the celebration is on at Statesboro. These fans at Georgia Southern are all over the field right now, Bob. They have a wonderful time. An incredible day of football comes to an end in Statesboro with Georgia Southern knocking off Furman 27 to 24. For Corey Kessler and the rest of our crew, Curtis Bayham, it was a pleasure. Bob Rathman saying so long from Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern wins at 27 to 24.